Yes. So, what can you tell us then? against the dollar. Why? Yes. So a similar situation in the 80s. Japan had a high growth. Okay, so what did the US say? What did the US ask the Japan to do? What did the U.S. ask Japan to do? First, Japan had a high export, very high growth, just like China, right? So what did the U.S. say then? Did the U.S. say, no problem? Or did they ask Japan to appreciate their currency? Like they're asking. Yeah. So why? Appreciate against the dollar? The U.S. asked them to do that, right? So Japan agreed. Okay. Uh, what was the name of this agreement where Japan agreed and Germany also agreed? What was the name of the agreement? The Plaza Accord. Okay, so the Plaza Accord. So this was a meeting between the governments of US, Japan, Germany, UK and France. Okay? They agreed to let the US dollar depreciate against the yen and the Deutsche Mark. So the dollar, how much weaker did the dollar get? After this agreement, how much weaker? The yen appreciated against the dollar. Half. half, right? So the dollar got weaker by half, so it got 50% weaker. That's a lot, right? So that's what, so what happened after the dollar got weaker? Did it solve all the US problems or not? Was that magic? Solved all the problems? Suddenly Japan's exports goes down and US exports goes up and everything is okay? No. no Why not? Why didn't it work like the US expected? Oh, no. oh, it did not reduce US trade deficit with Japan, right? The US had a, just like with China, it had a huge trade deficit with Japan, okay? Why not? Uh, two countries, companies, were not selling the same categories of products. So different categories of products. Do you understand? What kind of products was Japan selling? in the 80s. What do you think? What kind of products was Japan selling? Electronic machine. Electronics, like Walkmans and so on, right? But US companies weren't making Walkmans. Or maybe the quality was a lot worse. Sony's quality might have been much better than the US one. How much? The US dollar gets 50% weaker. The US one is cheaper and Sony one is more expensive. Am I going to buy the US one? No. No, it's really bad. US doesn't have industry, electronic industry. Right? I'm still going to buy the Sony one. Okay? Do you understand that point? Yes. Okay? If the clothes, t-shirt, is from China, right? Or the US. But the one from China already is much cheaper. If it changed the price more expensive, maybe I'm still going to buy that one. Right? US doesn't make any t-shirt. If they do make a t-shirt, it's just a very expensive one. Right? They don't have a t-shirt industry. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Any other reason? Japanese market was still close to US, US imports. Okay, so Japan has some non tariff barriers. So even though we reduce the price, there could be some reasons that people don't buy the 
uh, US products in Japan, right? Japan has a very strict distribution system with a lot of middlemen. It's hard to distribute your product in Japan for the cultural reasons. J Japanese people are very loyal. Do you understand loyal? Yes. They stay with the same distributor or the same person for a long time, okay? So it didn't help that much. So then let's move on to the next one. But we should point here, it did not reduce the trade deficit with Japan, but it caused Japan a lot of problems, okay? The strong yen caused Japan many problems, and Japan had some big stock market crash in 1990, right? So it made, the government made some, uh, they had some problems first, then the government did the QE. You understand the QE? Yes. Right? And the QE caused property and stock bubble. Do you think the US has the same problem now? The US stock market went from 700, S&P 500 went from 700 to 2100 over the last five years. US was doing QE. Some people think US has a bubble. The stock market will go down, right? Do you understand how QE can make a bubble in the stock market? Yes. yes. Right? So, <coughs> this is one lesson. What about the Asian crisis? Asia, Asian countries have the US dollar, but it's very risky because they are fundamentally so very difficult. So, maybe it's not a good choice. Okay, so you think that Peg to US dollar, like Korea and Thailand and so on. We talked about Thailand before. Yes. Peg to US, not sustainable because their fundamental is very difficult. Economic fundamentals, right? A little bit like Greece, maybe productivity and those things, those kind of things, problems, right? Uh, so. Uh, the, what about China? Only China is the maintain the peg. So how could China maintain its peg? The other countries couldn't. The capital control. Uh, capital control. Do you understand capital controls? What does capital controls? Politics. What? Capital, what's another word for capital? Money. Do you understand control? Yes. Capital controls is stopping the flow of money in and out of the country. Okay? So even now China has capital controls. That's why it wasn't so badly affected by the recent global financial crisis. Okay? So it means, capital controls means that Chinese companies were not allowed to invest in the U.S. banks, right? They are not allowed to buy the stock in the U.S. bank or buy some risky financial product from the U.S. Okay? Or in those days, you're not allowed to change the money, right? Like we explained about the Chinese companies, they have to give the U.S. dollars to the banks, okay? So those kind of controls meant that China, the investors in Thailand, we saw, just put in their money and took out their money very quickly. Korea the same, right? Yes. Investors put in their money and took out their money quickly and freely, easily. With capital controls, you can't send your money to a country and take out easily. Okay? So just recently, Brazil was worried about some hot money coming from the US to Brazil, causing some stock market bubble and crash, okay? When the US was doing their QE. So Brazil started to do capital controls again. The type of capital control that Brazil did was if you invest in Brazil, you have to put some money in another account with no interest and leave your money in the other account for one year or two years. Can you break the account after one month? No, you have to leave the money for one year or two years, right? So you want to invest in Brazil? Fine, but you have to make another account with some money that you have to leave there for one year or two years. Do you understand? 
Yes. So they're making sure controlling the money coming in and out of the country. So China had that kind of controls. They then the, uh, the Hong Kong dollar. Did somebody read this one? Uh, just we, it's just a side note anyway. I don't think it's relevant to the main point. Uh, just it mentions that Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong can have the pegged currency because it has a lot of U.S. dollars dollar reserves. It has 136 billion U.S. dollars in reserves. So nobody is going to attack Hong Kong. Also, Hong Kong is a financial center. So as a financial center, stability is very important. Okay. So the pegged currency is good for financial center. Do you understand why stability is important for a financial center? Yes. Why people are investing their money there? They don't want to worry too much about exchange rate risk. So I'm a US investor. I want to invest in Ch China's economy is growing very quickly. I want to get some of that benefit for me. I can invest in stocks in Hong Kong. So China company sends their stocks in the Hong Kong stock market. Okay. Do I have to worry about exchange rate risk? No. US investor investing in Hong Kong? No. No, it's always eight Hong Kong dollars is one US dollar. Okay? So Hong Kong has that advantage for financial center. Also, many Chinese companies can list their sell their stocks in the Hong Kong stock market. Okay? So then we looked at the last part, China facing important decision, which was the questions, right? So uh, here we have a couple of points that they make, just in the conclusion. Where we can write down here. First of all, uh, if the US dollar gets weaker, what happens to China's savings? China has a lot of savings in dollars. So the US dollar gets weaker and the RMB gets stronger. Does China have more savings or less savings? More savings? Less savings. If you're saving money in the US dollar, do you want the US dollar to get stronger or weaker? Stronger. So if the US dollar gets weaker, does China have more savings or less savings? Less savings. So the value of China's savings goes down, right? The value goes down. One factor, right? Uh, China has to find jobs. China has millions of farmers. Do you understand farmers? Yes. One or maybe hundred millions of farmers. Surplus farmers. Okay, they just are educated to maybe elementary or middle school education, right? No high school education. So they need to find jobs for these guys. Okay. That's another factor. China's exporters, their profit mar margin is thin. They are not the high value, like BMW. They have a high profit margin. Do you understand profit margin? Yes. China's exporters is mainly in the low profit margin business. Okay. So if the exchange rate changes, it can easily, they can go from profit to loss. Do you understand? If I'm selling Gucci handbags, do I have a high profit margin or low profit margin? High profit. How much does it cost to make a Gucci handbag? Uh, maybe 300 won. Hmm? 300 won, stand like one? Uh, million. Uh, hmm? How much does it cost to make the handbag? Let's say it costs a hundred dollars, right? Then they sell for $1,500, right? Profit margin, $1,400, okay? But if I'm selling a plastic cup, okay, the plastic cup costs 90 cents to make. I sell for $1, okay? Profit margin is 10 cents, okay? Do you understand? Small profit margin. Can I make a big profit margin on a plastic cup? No. Why can I make a big profit margin on Gucci handbags? Elevation. Marketing, right? Marketing and uh, maybe I have some special know-how or design, right? <coughs> that kind of thing, okay? So
So nowadays China is trying to move up the value chain. That's called a value chain, right? Low value added product, plastic cup, not much value added. High value added product, luxury handbag, okay, with the design and so on. So uh, China's headquarters in currently is in low uh, value added and profit margin business, okay. Uh, if we change suddenly, maybe the Chinese people could send their money overseas altogether, right? So we saw there was a big stock market bubble in China, right? But Chinese people are not allowed to invest in other countries, in other stock markets. So maybe if they could, they would. Suddenly, and all together, just like the bubble which was in China last year, right? They would in, could invest abroad, causing the instability in China. Maybe the banks and the stock market could go down, right? Because people take their money out of their stocks in China and decide to buy the stocks in Korea or the US. So then, uh, the Chinese government was looking at some alternative. Do you understand alternative? To let it get bigger. So they're promoting outward FDI. Promoting outward FDI. Do you understand outward FDI? Inward FDI, outward FDI? Yes. What is outward FDI? What? 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 So what, who is investing in another country? So Chinese companies are investing, setting up in another country, right? Yes. Buying the other country's company, yeah. that kind of thing. Okay, so more, you know Len Lenovo? Yes. Lenovo and IBM? Yes. So Len Lenovo acquired IBM, that's outward FDI. Okay. Okay. Foreign people invest in China. So Apple builds a factory in China, inward FDI for China, right? Outward FDI, Chinese company like Lenovo buys IBM. Or Lenovo sets up a factory in the US, outward FDI. Okay? Uh, also, one suggestion they make here, does they make a suggestion of outward export tax or voluntary export tax? Do you understand export tax? So instead of other countries putting the tax on China, China decides to make its own tax on its exports. That's a suggestion. Okay. So then we need, that's all of the information of the case. So we need to put the information together and answer our questions. Okay. So we are going to do this analysis and action plan. What should we do? So just before that, we're going to look. At, we can look at some of the graph, some of the data we have in the, the graphs. Can you turn off just the middle light here? Somebody who's at the back of the room, just turn off the middle one. So this is the uh, first one, we're just going through the exhibits. This is the exchange rate of the RMB value for one dollar. It used to be three in 1985. It went up. You can see this is a pegged rate, and then the government would change it, right? And then it would be pegged again, and the government would change it slightly. Okay, but in this in this time it was pegged. Do you understand pegged? 
Yes. From 1996 to 2004, it was pegged at around eight for one dollar, like Hong Kong, right? But since that time, they allowed it to do mass floating, so it's been getting stronger. What is the exchange right now for one dollar? So if we follow this line, it's going to go down to 2015, six, right? It's been going this way. China and Japan's foreign currency reserves. Japan is the black line, China is the yellow line, US billions. Okay, so China has more reserves to Number one, apart from the US Central Bank, which holds the most US government bonds, China is the next biggest holder of US government bonds, <coughs> then it's Japan. So this line has gone up, kept going up to two, almost two trillion, okay? So this is evidence that the US gives that China's currency is undervalued. China's keeps increasing its reserves. Do you understand that? If China keeps buying more dollars and increasing its reserves, maybe it's buying the dollars, not to save the money. Does it really need more US dollars? Does China really need more US dollars? No, right? Maybe it's just doing that to keep its exchange rate weak. That's why it's buying the dollars, okay? So, <laughs> the other Asian currencies, we said they followed, also contend to follow the Chinese one against the dollar. So these currencies, just like the, they also appreciated against the US dollar as the Chinese RMB was appreciating. Okay. The US trade deficit with China, okay, merchandise, so goods, this is just goods, getting, getting worse, right? Again, the US is saying, look at this trade deficit getting worse. China, you have undervalued currency. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the world's leading exporters and importers. Okay. Uh, 2004 and 2005. So here's exporters. Germany. Germany the U.S. China. Importers, yeah. United States, Germany, China, right? So China are saying, well, look, we're importing a lot of things as well. Look, our imports is going up 35%. Our exports may be going up 35%. We're growing very quickly. But our imports are also going up, okay? We have a deficit with other countries. So that's China saying we're not undervalued, okay? Uh, <coughs> FDI inflow into China. Where is the FDI coming from? Okay. Hong Kong, Virgin Islands, South Korea, Japan. Okay. So that's why one reason why South Korea and Japan get some advantage also from lower, Labor. cheaper Korean or Chinese RMB, right? Then Taiwan is here too. United States also gets some advantage. Okay. Uh, what is China importing? Okay, uh, we can see here raw materials. Non-edible raw materials is a big import in China, like oil, right? Uh, machinery and transport equipment. <coughs> so China's trade surplus and deficit with its trade partners here. So with with uh, China, with the U.S., they have a trade surplus. North America. Okay, plus is surplus. China is, has a trade surplus, means China is exporting more, importing less. Okay? EU also a big trade surplus, China. Okay? But with Asia, deficit, China is importing more from Asia than exporting. Okay? ASEAN, do you know ASEAN? Yes. Deficit. Africa, deficit. Oceania, deficit. Okay? So some countries it has. Uh, deficit. That's China's point. We have deficits with maybe with the US we have a huge trade surplus, but with other countries we have deficits too. Okay, here if we look at China's balance of payments, we studied about the balance of payments before. What do you expect to see in China's balance of payments? If we know that China's reserves is going up all the time, what do we expect to see on the balance of payments? 
capital account surplus, current account surplus, capital account deficit, current account deficit, what would you say? Do you remember in Thailand we looked at their balance of payments and their reserves was going down? Why was their reserves going down? They had what? Current account what? Deficit. And capital account what? Deficit. Deficit. So their reserves are going down. So we know that China's reserves are going up. So what does China have? Surplus. Surplus in the current account. And what about the capital account? Also surplus, right? So it has double surplus. Surplus in current account and surplus in capital account. So where is that money going? Instead of balancing each other out, like in the floating exchange regime, right? The central bank is intervening and taking the US dollars out as reserves. So their reserves are going up. They have double surplus, okay? So we can see here, current account balance is surplus. Exports higher than imports. Capital account balance is also surplus. Okay, more money being invested in China than coming out of China. So what does that mean? It means that at the end, we have reserves at the bottom line to balance out. Foreign exchange reserves going up every year in China. Does everybody understand that? Yes. We have a surplus on the current account. We have a surplus on the capital account. Our reserves are going up. Okay. Uh, so that's the other data that we looked at. So let's take a break now for 10 minutes and then we'll do the analysis of action plan.